G'day folks, Rob here. I've had a couple of people ask me the same question. I've just been going through the comment sections looking at comments and questions and yeah, sorry folks, it's taken me a while to catch up. Uh, but one that's come up a couple of times today and I thought I'd answer it on this video and also give a bit of a general roundup on the aquaponics. Uh, the question was, what do you do if you get a lot of rain? Uh, seeing as our system is partially exposed to the elements. Um, our old system is pretty much all, all in the open as well. So I thought I'd answer that here today. Um, so yeah, I'll flip the camera around and give you a bit of a gander. So as you can see, things have cleared up a little bit today. But um, I was joking with the supporters this morning using a very technical uh, wheelbarrow rain gauge that we had roughly around about a third of a shovel worth of rain overnight. I don't know how much that is in millimetres or inches, but I'm guessing it'd be close to two inches or 50 mil worth of rain. Uh, so yeah, a fair bit of rain has fallen. And as you can probably see from the sump tank, we're fairly full. We have all that water from the large bed to go into it. And I think that other bed is about to come all online and empty as well. Just looking at the dribble of water. Yeah, there we go. The siphon's about to kick off. So the sump tank looked like it was getting very full and was slightly overflowing this morning. So all I did to um, make sure we had enough space in the system so it wouldn't overflow was take the bell off of this bell siphon here. Uh, very easy. Uh, it just means that this bed will be holding maximum amount of water. And if we were to get more rain, the next one I'd do is probably take the bell siphon out of that one because I still have a couple of garlic I need to harvest out of there. Um, so take the bell siphon out of that, or the bell off of that one, and that would allow that whole bed to fill up with water. And it would just, yeah, basically sit there until I pop the bell siphon back on. Just to give you some idea, um, normally only fill up to just below that water level, probably about three, two to three inches below the water level at the moment. You can tell by the green bias line on the sump tank. And what that means is I have roughly around about, oh, I'd say at a guess 100, 120 litres, about, oh, what's that, probably about 25, 26 gallons worth of water that um, can collect in the grow beds and fill up into the sump tank before it starts to overflow. Um, I just like to have that little bit of freeboard there for rain events like we had last night. Uh, the only reason this one overflowed, I think, is because I cleaned out the filter yesterday, or was it the day before anyway, in the last couple of days, and top the system right up again because I didn't think it was going to rain. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much well why uh, we've got into this situation. No great drama though, the nutrients won't be that watered down. I mean, it's just extra water in there, nothing's been flushed out. And the fish have been eating fairly well. Probably not going to see them, only just shadows at the moment. Um, so pretty happy with that. Uh, as for pH, uh, if you do have a lot of rainwater entering into your system, it can affect your pH. I was looking at this this morning and it came in at roughly 6.5 and I did mention to the supporters that I need to dose with some um, calcium hydroxide and yeah it looks like it's slipped down a little bit further so we'll have to dose that this afternoon. Actually we'll do this now and then we'll get on to a little bit of an update on the system. So what I've got here is basically a heat dessert spoon with a calcium hydroxide. Just pop that in there, I'll screw that lid on quickly. And then I just fill it up with some water coming out of the biofilter. That should pretty much all do it. And give it a little bit of a mix around. Now this stuff here will raise the pH, but it doesn't have a lot of carbonates in it. Um, so it doesn't actually buffer the pH in the system. It's a bit of a quick fix pH adjustment. And because I'm here working from home, I can pretty much all keep an eye on the pH and just adjust it with this. Uh, if I wanted a more long-term pH bump, uh, what I'd use would be um, potassium um, bicarbonate, which I have some of. Um, this is going to be rather hard with just two hands, but we'll try. Just excuse me, Mrs. Cabbage. So, and then all I do is just pour a little bit into each grow bed, probably about a third. I might just um, pour the rest into this larger grow bed. It's got a bit of water in here just to wash the rest out. Now I'm hoping that's going to bump the pH up to around about 5 point, oh sorry, 5, 6.6, 6.7. And yeah, from there I'll just keep an eye on it tomorrow morning. Uh, the reason it's um, falling is not only the rainwater lower pH, but because the fish are being fed more, the nitrification cycle is um, using up more alkalinity in the water. As you can see here, we have a couple of roots from plants. I took out all the broccoli the other day and took them over to my sister and let them um, feast on the greens after we did a small harvest. So I just didn't come back and take the roots out, which I'll do now. And I'm just going to leave these on the surface just so the roots can dry out a bit. 
and we can get all the clay balls out. Oh, this one's pretty much all okay. The other thing is too, quite often you'll find compost worms up in the roots and I really don't want to um, yeah, hurt them by trying to get all the clay out, so I'll just leave them be. Um, yeah, so I've got a bit of a gap there. I'm not 100% sure on what I'm going to put in there yet. Um, maybe just some fast growing greens. I've got some bok choy upstairs um, in the hydroponics that is doing nowhere near as good as um, these fellas over here, which I'll be harvesting, start harvesting later on in the week. Um, so I might just pop them down in here uh, because they definitely look like they're doing better in the aquaponics at the moment. Uh, nutrients deficiency wise, I think we're pretty much all on top of it. Some of the older leaves are showing a little bit, but the newer leaves are coming in green, nice and green. Um, I do think I am having a few issues with mites though. You can tell by the curled leaves there and also by some um, aphids as well. The broccoli had a fair bit of aphid damage on it. And as you can see down there, we have some curling of those um, cabbage leaves. And I looked in there the other day and there were some aphids. So I gave them a bit of a uh, wash down with some soapy water. So I'm looking at trying a um, new organic um, all round tonic. It's a natural product. It's called Pure Crop One from memory. I think I got that right. It's basically a uh, pesticide, fungicide, kills off mold and powdery mildew and that sort of thing, and a biostimulant. And I'll get some of that and try it and I'll give you guys results. Uh, these mites, I'm fairly sure it's um, mite damage I can see on there because I've seen it before on capsicums. And just up on the deck above us is where we have all our other um, bit of a herb garden and Bianca's got some flowers up there. And I know on her um, flowered potted plants, we've definitely got signs of mites up there. And yeah, I think they have fallen down here and um, infested some of the plants. Add time folks, just a bit of a plug or a spruik for my aquaponics beginners guide. There will be a link down in the description as well as a, a little card that will pop up there and a button at the end as well. It's an online interactive aquaponics beginner's guide. Um, basically, you can talk into the microphone, um, give it a topic to look up. It'll give you a list of results and from there you can just tap on the text in the videos that are shown to jump to whatever parts you want. So very interactive, very cheap as well. And by all reports, um, everyone's loving it so far. So that's enough spruiking, back to the vid. I'll just give you a quick look at the aquaponic potatoes. They're going fairly well. I keep finding these guys on there though. I don't know if we can, there we go. The 28 spot lady beetles keep coming around and squashing them. By the way, uh, you folks elsewhere in the world, these guys are a pest. They eat your um, Solanaceae family and also your cucurbits. Uh, that's your potatoes and also your pumpkins and cucumbers and that sort of thing. And they basically do this sort of damage here where they just chew off the top green layer of the leaves. Uh, so no great damage to the plant, just makes them look a little bit messy. But if you get the, um, the larvae all hatching, they can actually decimate them quite badly. Uh, that end one there is the um, clay pouch and it's growing rather green still. The soil pouch is still growing really well, but this coconut coir plant has had a bit of a setback. Um, it died back the other day, started to die back. I thought it may have just been the heat, but the others look fine. And we're, she's only just hanging on. So there's definitely something a um, bit rotten down there in coconut coir land. So I'll probably end up pulling this one out very soon. And I'm going to try and keep the clay away from the base. And I'll put another pouch in there with some other plants. Uh, around the corner here, the uh, beans. The beans started to get powdery mildew on them. So that's another reason why I wanted to try that pure crop. See how that goes. And yeah, they're definitely overcrowded. So as soon as I can find my bean seeds, I'm going to pop some more seeds in there after we pull these plants out. The um, uh, bok choy has had a little bit of aphid damage and seeing signs of mites as well. So I dare say they have made it down into the system from upstairs. So definitely be giving them a spray. Uh, the cabbages are going really well. I'm really happy with the way uh, the growth that they've um, put on. Uh, it's just unfortunate that some of the beds are exposed to the rain. So the dye pool that I've been using with the uh, bit of a soap uh, mix in there as well uh, to keep the cabbage butterflies off, that would have been washed off. So you can see from the, uh, the newer leaves, 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 they look okay. These older ones, a few holes in them. Um, yeah, so in the curl, there we go. The curl I found is generally due to um, aphids on their leaves. Just round here at the other bed, uh, the uh, Brussels sprouts that was in here has come out. Uh, the ginger in here is going okay. Oh, and I'll give you a look at the ginger in the other bed as well. Uh, the um, Argie Amarillo chilies, 
I've decided I'm going to pull grandma out because she's got very wobbly and I dare say there's a load of root mass under there and some of it's got a bit manky and yeah so she can come out and behind the ginger here I have um, this plant here it's sending an upright there and an upright there I will keep that one and I'll be pulling out these smaller ones I just I might just chop them off at the base because I really don't want to disturb the clay too much because that ginger, if we can get these leaves out of the way, goes all the way over to there. So I don't want to disturb the clay too much on that. Uh, the perennial spinach, or chard I should say, keeps calling it the wrong thing. Loads of new little stems and growths coming out there, so pretty happy with that. And I think I've got the onion aphids under control after I took out the, um, the garlic. Seeing a couple every here and every now and then. There's three small ones down in there. Uh, but yeah, it's just a matter of going around and squishing them and blasting them with the soapy spray. So this is the other ginger in the system. Pretty happy with the way it's going. This first one was looking a little bit manky. And some of the older leaves are looking a little bit um, chlorotic, a little bit yellowing. I noticed on the cabbage over there as well, it's looking a, like the older leaves are getting a little bit yellow. Uh, that's generally a magnesium issue. Uh, magnesium is mobile, so the um, older plants will give it up to the younger, newer growth. So I think I'll have to be um, dosing with Epsom salt. So that's um, something else that I've got to keep an eye on. But yeah, this ginger is looking good. I'm hoping to get a very decent harvest out of the aquaponics this season. I might have to do a little bit of a transplant into a pouch and then move it into the newer system because, yeah, hopefully this system will be gone in a couple of months' time. But that's for another video. So we'll just quickly throw some food in for the fish. Oh, I'm not too sure if they're going to take it. They're very slow taking, um, taking it this morning. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, it was a little bit cooler this morning, plus we had a lot of rain. And I have a feeling that the, uh, the water chemistry change with the extra rainwater in the system does tend to put them off the um, feet a bit. Not much. That's just anecdotal, by the way. Just my observation. But it doesn't look like they're overly interested, so I won't add the rest of this cup in. Only got a little bit left. I'll pop that in once all that disappears. The next video you're going to see on the channel, fingers crossed if I can get it knocked out in time, will be a look at the basic aquaponic system, the easiest way to start an aquaponic system. A few folks have been asking, I get a load of people ask what's the easiest way to um, start off. So that video will be coming soon. If you want a notification when it arrives, hit that little subscribe button and then jump on over to the bell icon. So YouTube will hopefully send you notifications as soon as it's uploaded to the channel. Uh, just quickly, thank you very much to everyone who has purchased the Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide. Thank you very much as well to everyone who comes along every week and thumbs up the videos and leaves a comment down below. Always great to chat to you down there. And also, last but not least, thanks to those folks who are supporting us on the YouTube membership platform and also the Farm Your Own Yard supporters website. Thank you very much as well, folks. But now I will leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy in your own gardens and aquaponics is booming. And I'll see you next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing. You've got to be joking me and being trolled by a white cabbage butterfly.